my channel. My name is Jeanette Fryer. I am the owner and creator of Jabel Chic. Today I thought I would do a introductory introduction video of tumblers for the new tumbler makers out, out there that just getting into making tumblers. So forgive me, this is going to be kind of a long video, but I just want to make sure I capture all the details for the new tumbler makers so they know what's included when starting their very first tumbler. So if that's some type of content that you're interested in, please stick around and please, please, please consider clicking that subscribe button and that follow button so you won't miss out on any of my future YouTube videos. All right, let's go. I'm gonna be starting with a 20 ounce tumbler from Craft Haven. I will link the, um, the link to this tumbler below in the description box so you'll know where to get it. I have been ordering for Craft Haven for years. I really love their tumblers, really well made, and my customers seem to love them as well. So we're gonna start with this 20 ounce. I'm gonna show you how, to, how I tape it off because I don't um, put glitter up to the top and the bottom. I just leave a little um, stainless steel from the top and the bottom because that's just how I like to do my tumblers. So let's start with that step first and then we get into the, the remainder of the steps. All right. I remember before we began, I thought I will share the supplies that's needed for each step. I feel that's easier to see how the supplies are used for each step than listing the supplies at the beginning of the video. However, I will have those supplies listed in the description box so you're able to refer back to those supplies at the end of the video. All right, so let's get into it. Guys, we're up back. So, as I stated before, we're going to be using a 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler from the Craft Haven. Um, it's just a regular um, 20 ounce. It has a, you know, kind of curve to it, which I love. Um, the bottom is kind of round, you know, um, curved over, but no issues there. And the top is kind of straight as well. So, what I do at the beginning, as I said before, I like to leave some silver at the top and the bottom. So, I just have a regular Sharpie pen. A regular Sharpie pen that I'm going to make a little um, line on the tumbler to guide me as to where I'm going to put my tape when I tape it off. Alright, so I just get something that's just going to give me a little height. In this case, I'm just using a popsicle stick or something. It's just going to give me a little height. And what I'm going to do with this pen, I'm just going to take the tumbler and I'm just going to twist it. giving out ink so I'm having to put a little bit more motion into it. It gave me a little, if you can see that, it gave me a little guide as to where I'm going to put my tape when I tape it off. Alright, so let's do the same thing at the bottom. The same thing at the bottom just gave me a little guide all right so next in order to tape it off this is just some regular electrical tape I got this kind from I think I got it from Home Depot but you can just use any type of electrical tape um, that you prefer and this is what we're going to use to tape the tumbler off that line that I drew I'm just going to line the tape up and just bend the tumbler just taping it off taped off so next we're gonna um, of course I need to scuff this up before I paint it um, so next we're going to paint um, scuff it up um, well scuff the, the surface up so that the epoxy and the paint will have something to uh, adhere to all right so next we're gonna be using just some regular sandpaper um, I think this is probably like 80 or 90 grit I mean 80 grit or something like that and we're just gonna scuff it up And you don't have to do it really hard, just, just give it a light, light stuff. 
All right, so we just gave it a light scuff. So next we have to clean it. All right, so let me get the supplies that we're gonna need to clean that with and I'll be right back. All right, so next um, to clean it, I don't, even, I don't even go to a sink or anything. I just pretty much like to kind of do everything I can in my, in my workspace. So next we're gonna be using, this is just some regular alcohol that I put in a, a spray bottle that you can get from anywhere. And we're just gonna spray the surface. Spray it down really well. And just take a regular microfiber wrap um, cloth and just clean it. To our side, I thought I would share um, what I'm using for my tumblers. Um, this is just a regular foot, um, football you can get off Etsy or the Dollar Tree or anything like that. And what I do is just uh, attach it to a three quarter PVC pipe and just stuff it down in my tumbler. And it seems to work for me. I do have other attachments that I would get into in other videos, but when I'm doing the initial process of the um, glittering and the epoxy method that I will show you later on in this video, this is what I like to use and it works really well. So let's go outside and get this painted. All right, you guys, so we're outside getting ready to paint the tumbler. Um, so I'm gonna be using just some regular Rust-Oleum matte white paint. It can be any type of white paint. It really doesn't matter what type of paint you use. I just really just like using the bad version. So this is just my Rust-Oleum matte and it's just a regular white. Um, so we're gonna paint this tumbler. So of course when you're painting, I like to have some gloves just to kind of keep my hands clean and it, and, it, and it works for me. So I just really don't like using acetone to clean up the, um, the, paint, the paint that can get on your hands. So these are just some regular gloves. You can get them from the Dollar Tree or I think I got these from Walmart or, or somewhere like that. But just some regular gloves that's gonna keep your hands protected. And of course I put them all backwards. All right, and just for the video, I know we have a full face respirator when I'm painting, but today I'm just gonna use just a regular mask to kind of protect myself when I'm painting. back um, the tumbler has finished drying we have painted it so the next step is to apply the glitter I know a lot of people use Mod Podge when applying the glitter however I like to use the epoxy method so that is the method that we're gonna use today when applying glitter to this tumbler um, so the kind of epoxy that I use is the amazing clear cast you can get this from Hobby Lobby um, it comes with part A and part B. Um, you mix two equal parts of part, you mix one equal part of part A and part B to um, compute the mixture and we will go from there. So this is just from Hobby Lobby. Um, I bought this to show you guys that, but you also can go on the Illuminite site and buy the big old gallon jugs, which I also do buy. However, I just bought this to show you guys that you can get this smaller version from Hobby Lobby and it is $17.99. All right, so it comes with two measuring cups already and two popsicle sticks. And here is the, how the size look. You got part A and part B. So you mix one equal part of each, right? So like I said, I like to use the epoxy method. So we're gonna get started applying the epoxy to the tumbler so that we can apply the glitter afterwards. All right, so let's get into it. We're back. So in order to apply the Epoxy to the tumbler, you're gonna need some rubber gloves. And you can just get these from anywhere. Um, it doesn't matter, Walmart or anything like that. You're gonna need two measuring cups. Like I said, two um, cups already come in the box from Hobby Lobby for the, um, the Illuminite. Two measuring cups. Um, I use a Sharpie to measure my measuring, I mean to measure where I'm gonna pour the epoxy in the, in the measuring cups. I like to use a like a tongue suppressor to stir the epoxy once I get it in there and a small popsicle stick to put the mixture in the cup. Um, sorry about that. 
Um, after I put the mixture in the cup, when I pour part A and part B in here, I can pour it in another cup. And this is just some cups I got off Amazon. I try to make those blue as well. All right, so of course, like I said for the video, so I'm able to talk and explain it to you. I'm just gonna use this mask right here. However, um, you can use a full face respirator, which is 100% recommended. But in order for today, I need to be able for you guys to hear me, so I'm just gonna use this right here. So let's get started. For part A, to use the epoxy method, you only need a little bit. So just to measure, I'm just gonna do about 2.5 on each in each cup. But in order to see those little lines, I have to put a little blank mark there. So I wanna measure at 2.5. Like I said, when you're using the epoxy method, you don't need a lot. I probably won't even need this, but that is just the lowest line that I can go when you, when um, when using that medicine cup. And these medicine cups you can get from anywhere. My gloves on. I already have my mask on, so we're gonna get started. So we're gonna start with part A. up to that 2.5 line. Pour because I put that little black mark in there to see. Part B. Part B is a little bit more runnier than part A. If I'm mixing, you'll see in a later step. So I think I won't even use this cup right now because this will be, I'll use this cup when I'm doing the overall coat when I, after I apply the glitter and apply my first coat of epoxy. However, right now I'm just gonna pour part A and I mean part B into part A. To use this little popsicle, the smallest popsicle stick. Two. So just make sure you try to scrape out every little inch you can from the cup. If I was mixing a lot, I would use this to start stirring. However, since I only have this little bit, I'm just gonna stir it in the thing. All right, so let's get this stirred up and we'll be right back. All right, so I have been stirring this for about two to three minutes and I don't really time it. I've been doing this for so long, so it's just, I just kind of gauge it in my head when I think it's mixed enough. All right, so let's move on to the next step, which is applying this epoxy. All right, so just make sure you have your gloves on. And we're gonna apply the epoxy. So like I said, you only want a thin coat. So like I said, it's, it, it's not gonna even take all of this. You want it to be very thin. back so my favorite portion is to glitter of course and I hopefully that's yours as well 
So today we're gonna be using Winter's Breath. It's a fine blend by Yaya's Glitter. I have so much of this glitter from this company and I really love it. So like I said, um, as I continue on my YouTube journey, I share some more of the types of glitters that I use and where I get them from. But today, this is Winter's Breath by Fine, um, by, it's a fine blend by Yaya's Glitter. And I'll have this link below as well. All right, so we have a perfectly covered tumbler. It has been coated in epoxy, so now we're gonna begin to glitter. And I thought I would just keep this simple for the first time tumbler makers with, with just a fine blend instead of doing anything crazy. So we're just gonna apply a light shake to it. It's, it's, it's so pretty. you get up to the top of that tape line so you get that clean crisp line gloves on and your mask on at this point I was just getting a little stuffy because of my allergies today so I just took it off using the epoxy method the coverage is gonna be amazing so one rule of thumb, when you're doing a tumbler, since we did this kind of white color, um, I painted the base white. However, if you're doing a pink, a rule of thumb is to paint it pink or use, use a type of paint that's gonna be close, as close to your glitter as possible to get the best coverage. And right now I'm just going back over just to make sure I'm covering all those any spots that I see that looks kind of sparse or just need more glitter in. Alright, one second. And because I'm extra, I always just like to kind of pat my glitter down. Just trying to make sure it's flat as possible. baby wipe just to kind of pat it down. It's easier when you're applying your first coat of epoxy. It kind of helps that glitter lay as flat and you're not having to do too many coats of epoxy to cover this glitter up. Baby wipe, not much is coming off from the wipe, onto the wipe I meant. Back over it, make sure I got all these spots covered. Top, I'm just making sure that this tape line is nice and flat. This is how I'm able to get those really crisp lines. All right, so now we're able to remove the tape. And you see how crisp those lines are? Here's the bottom, and here's the top. All right, so I'm gonna put this on my turner and I'm gonna let it spin for about some overnight and it will be back tomorrow sometime to continue on to the next step. All right, you guys stay tuned. Oh, something I forgot to add is these little trays that I was sprinkling my, sprinkling my glitter into. I got these from Hobby Lobby and this is just a piece of paper that I just placed in here to just to catch that fallout glitter. And um, I really love these trays. I think I've had this tray. I have another one as well 
for like the last two or three years and they really hold up well. So it just catches your glitter and just kind of keeps your, keeps your space as neat as possible. All right, so we're gonna let that toner spin, I mean that tumbler spin on the toner at least overnight and then we'll return for the next step. All right, see you guys. All right, you guys, here it is the same day. I thought I was gonna leave that cup on the toner um, overnight. However, um, when I started filming this video, it was early in the morning. So it's been turning kind of all day long in front of my space heater. So now you can see that the glitter is really dry. So now before we go on to the next step, we have to actually seal the glitter. So what I'm gonna be using, we're gonna be sealing the glitter so the glitter won't move when you apply the, epo the epoxy. So what I'm gonna be using to seal the glitter is Matte Clear by Rust-Oleum. So I'm just gonna give this a good spray down and this is just gonna ensure that when I apply the epoxy, the glitter would not move. All right, so let's get that done. Today we have applied the glitter using the epoxy method. So, and we have also seal, sealed it with the Rust-Oleum two times matte clear. So now I'm gonna get ready to apply the first coat of epoxy onto it. However, we do have to clean it up before I can apply the first coat of epoxy. So let's get into that step. So we're back. So what I'm gonna use to clean it up is, um, I always like to clean the edges, like to get all this unevenness away, um, things like that. Just trying to make it really smooth around here and get all the paint. So essentially, I'm just trying to get all the paint from the edges and the extra glitter so that when I put it on the toner, everything is nice and clean. So what I use to complete this step is just a microfiber rag. I have some acetone just in a regular bottle. You can get these from anywhere. I, I think I got this from a beauty supply store or something like that. So what I am going to do is just take the acetone, squeeze a little bit here, and I'm just gonna try to just clean up that paint because when I painted it with the, um, when I sealed it with the two times matte clear from, from Rust-Oleum, a lot of the paint get on the edges. So I just want to clean up those edges. I have everything nice and clean. I've cleaned up all the edges. So now we're gonna get ready to tape it off so we can do our first coat of epoxy. So I'm just gonna use the same, just some regular electrical tape. Right, so I have mixed, I have poured equal parts of A and B. I put 20 ml of A and 20 ml of B. I probably won't use that for t all of that for 20 ounce, but I am just gonna just see what it takes. So normally for 20 ounce, you probably would need probably about 30 ml, 15 of A and then 15 of B to start off with. But um, I normally like to go pretty heavy on the first coat. So we're just gonna mix part A into here. And this is what I was explaining initially in the first step, I, I pour A and B into a bigger cup. And in this step, you want to make sure you have on your gloves and your respirator. And also make sure you're in a well-ventilated room.
when you're mixing, you wanna make sure you just scrape every little bit of epoxy out as much as you can. You're not gonna get it all, but you need to get pretty close. All right, and then I get my bigger stick, which is a tongue suppressor, and I just start stirring. So you wanna stir slow and steady. Just try to keep as many air bubbles down as possible. But in this step, I really don't worry about, I like to stir pretty fast, but I really don't worry about bubbles a lot. With this epoxy, with the, the Aluminite Cure Class, um, I don't really get a lot of bubbles. But, so each is on. So let's mix this and we'll be right back for the next step. I have been mis mixing um, part A and part B for about a minute. So now I have a little cup of um, hot water, warm water, whatever. I'm just going to place my epoxy in here just for a couple seconds. And I like to do this because it kind of, if you got bubbles, it's going to kind of pop some of those bubbles. But you don't want to leave it in here long. So I just place it in here just for a couple seconds and take it out and I continue to stir. Doing this step has really helped me. Um, I, I don't know, it just seems to work better for me when I kind of make the epoxy a little bit more fluid, if you will. Back, we have our tumbler on a turner and this is a five cup turner from I think it's from MH turners or glitter craze but I will link the the link to where, where I got this tumbler down below in the description so <clears throat> we're ready to begin so I have my surface covered up with just a pad um, you just want to make sure everything is good to go so you're not dropping any epoxy anywhere so we're just going to start with applying the epoxy. So you just want to make sure you get an even coat all the way around. So now that that has been spinning for, all right, you guys, we're back. So now that it has been, spinning, we're gonna go in with our heat gun. This is just a heat gun that I got from Amazon. It's a Warriors Warrior heat gun or whatever, but it's been working really well for me. So we're just gonna try to pop some of those bubbles that you can't see. Alright you guys, we're back. So now that it has been spinning for a couple minutes, we're going to pull the tape. So, I'm just going to pull the tape from the top and the bottom. I pulled the tape from the top and the bottom. I'm just going to get some 
just a regular baby wipe. So I just cut off a piece of baby wipe. I'm gonna take my acetone and I'm gonna clean it up. Just gonna put a little acetone in the baby wipe. I'm just gonna take it, I'm just gonna clean up those edges. So I don't want any epoxy spilling over onto the civil part at this time. And this is just how I like to do my tumblers. Uh, a lot of tumbler makers cover their tumblers from top to bottom. I tried that method, but I, I just don't I just don't like it. Um, all right, you guys, this is just my cup toner. It is a five cup toner, uh, and I think I got it from Glitter, K Glitter Craze or MH Tumblers, one or the other. However, both companies have similar toners. Um, I really love this toner because it has the magnetic, magnetic arms where you're able to place the three-quarter PVC pipe onto it, and it just locks into place. This thing has been a robe. It has it is so robust and it just really works out really well for me. So if you're interested in this type of term, turner, I will place the link down below. And it just works really, really I mean when I say it works well for me, I stand by this 100 percent No shaking, no nothing. It is so if you're really into tumbler making and you want to uh, have an investment, I think this was this one was around 250 or something like that. This is definitely the way to go. All right, you guys, we are back. So this has turned all night. Um, it is pretty smooth. Like I said before, I applied a, a pretty um, hefty coat. So I think we're gonna be good to go ahead and apply the decal. However, I still have to go outside and sand the edges um, where the epoxy is a little bumpy at the top and the bottom. So this is how I like to do it. I use something like a Dremel kind of Dremel kind of tool. Um, I got it from Hobby Lobby. It's by Win. So we're gonna go outside and sand that, and then we're gonna go do a wet sand just to get it a little bit more smoother, and then we're gonna move on to the applying the decal. Alright, so let's get into it. Alright y'all, we're back. So now I'm outside. We're going to get ready to sand the edges. Um, it doesn't need a lot of sanding, but I just like to sand it just to make sure I get everything nice and smooth down to the bottom. It's just with the epoxy, the epoxy and the glitter is just a little bumpy at. So this is the tool that I'm going to be using. It is by Wynn. Um, I actually got this whole thing from Hobby Lobby and it has like, um, I'm sure many of you have your nails on, it has like a little, little filer where you can get nice and close and do some really detailed work. So I'm going to use that to go along the edges right here. And I've been doing this technique for years and this is what works for me since I don't um, go all the way to the top and the bottom with my glitter. Alright, so let's get into that step. So I have my mask and my um, and my goggles on, and I just uh, I'm just sitting down. I just have a towel across my lap just to kind of keep some of this this dust at bay. And you see, I'm just going in really close to the edges. And you can sand down some really big bumps as well.
All right, you guys, we're back. So I forgot to mention earlier that before I started sanding, I actually taped the top and the bottom off um, so I wouldn't scratch the stainless steel portion. So right now I just have some very fine grit sandpaper. Um, I don't know what it is. I think it's about a 100 or something like that. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna turn the water on. And I just have some regular Dawn dish soap. Just put it a little bit on there. And we're just gonna give the cup just a light sand. You don't wanna do it too hard because you don't wanna, I mean, if you didn't do too close of epoxy, you don't wanna scratch that glitter. So just a light sand. Back. So now that we have um, sanded the edges of the top and the bottom, so now we're going to get ready to clean up the cup before we apply our decal. So what we want to do is just get the paint residue off the bottom and the paint residue off of the inside. So what I have is just an old microfiber cloth here and my good old trusty acetone. So I'm going to put some acetone on, on it and just rub it clean. Use your fingernail if you need to get some glitter specks off here and there, but we're just gonna clean it up. And what I like to do is go along the stainless steel portion and just make sure I clean up that as well. So now that I have finished cleaning the inside and the out, the inside and the outside, um, getting the overspray off, we're just gonna go in with some regular alcohol. This is just a spray bottle that you can get from anywhere, and we're just gonna spray it, spray it inside and out, and we're just gonna get our tumbler nice and clean. So I have chosen my decal off camera and I have chosen small business owner and I think I got this from Etsy or something like that. So um, I'm going to do this decal because I want to market this cup on my Etsy shop and also market it at local vendor markets as well. So we're going to go ahead and I think it's about 3.5 wide or something like that, but I'm just going to use some regular contact paper and I try to place the link to where I got this paper from and we are just gonna attach the decal to the tumbler and what I like to do is just try to get my decal on the contact paper first and then I place it back down because it's already lifted. And then I get my tumbler and I just figure out where I'm gonna place it. And I think I just want it, I don't want it straight, but I don't want it. Yeah, I think I want it straight. It looks better if it's straight. I was gonna do it sideways like that, but I think it looks better if it's straight. So I'm gonna just line it up as best as I can Make sure it's straight. 
And what I do is just make sure the left side is somewhat is down. And then I remove the paper from underneath. I just try to place it. Since this cup has a curve, I just have to kind of go kind of slow with it. So we're back. All right, you guys, so we're back for the next step. So the next step is we have to tape our tumbler off. Um, however, when we tape it off, we're just gonna leave just like a little silver part showing so that when I apply the final coats of epoxy, it actually is gonna encase the glitter in so you won't have any leakage or the seal being broken between the epoxy and the stainless steel portion. All right, so let's do that. So what we're doing here, it's just using the regular electrical tape and we're just leaving just a little silver part showing. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll be back for the next step. All right, guys, we're back. So we're gonna complete this tumbler. We have our decal on it, small business owner. So what I'm gonna be doing next, um, I have some quick coat by CC DIY, and I like to use this because I just wanna keep my decal from lifting. So what I do is just apply a small amount, and I'm using a silicone makeup brush, and I just apply a small amount to the decal. And once I apply that, I'm gonna let that dry for about 20 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna go back in and apply the final coats of epoxy. All right, so let's get that started. We're gonna turn on our turner, get that turning. We're just gonna add a little bit to the makeup brush. Well, it doesn't want to come out, so I'm going to have to pour a little bit in a cup to get stuck. All right, I'm just going to pour a tad. You just need a little bit. My little, um, the little dispenser is not working. I guess it's clogged up. All right, so I just have a little bit in here. So I'm just gonna stop it from turning for right now. And I'm just gonna spread it on my decal. And what this does, it just seals your decal in and just keeps it from lifting. I don't know if you guys have done tumblers, but the most aggravating thing that can happen is when you put a decal on and it lifts after you got a coat of epoxy on. And that is just really frustrating for me. you guys not that this has been spinning for a while and it is dry to the touch so now we're gonna we're gonna get ready to apply our final coats of epoxy so I have mixed the epoxy I have mixed 15 of A and 15 of B and off camera just to save time so now we're gonna mix it um I'm just gonna use one of my little thumb gloves um, these have saved me so much money on regular gloves um, because if you think about it, you only just use them one finger to epoxy with. So let's go ahead and get that started and then we will be on to finishing up this tumbler. So I did want to mention that during this process right here, you want to make sure that you're getting up to the top of the tape line where the epoxy meets the stainless steel portion just to make sure you close it in that gap. Just wanna seal that there is no leakage or the seal does not break between the glitter and the epoxy. Okay, 
during this step also you did see me using my heat gun as well so just make sure you're not getting too close to the decal or stand in one, one area too long. All right, you guys, so now that this has been spinning for a while, we're gonna get ready to pull the tape. And when you pull the tape, you will see that the epoxy has created a little seal between the glitter portion and the stainless steel portion. And that is exactly what we want it to happen. Let me stop this right here. All right. Oops. All right, so now that we have pulled the tape, I'm gonna go in with my acetone on just a little piece of um just a little piece of baby wipe, and we're just gonna clean up the edges. Be sure not to disturb your seal between the epoxy and the and the um, stainless steel portion. And you will see that it has created a nice little line. We are finally finished with this tumbler and I think it turned out amazing. So for all you new tumbler makers out there, I hope I have inspired you to start your very first tumbler. It is really an easy process. So you just have to have fun with it. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna find that. That's gonna be a normal process. So don't worry. So just get into it, have fun with it, and just create something beautiful. As you can see, this, is, this was a very simple tumbler just to get you guys started and see how the process all ends. And I hope you guys loved it. And I also thought for my videos that I would end my video, videos with a positive quote. So the quote for this video is, a beautiful day begins with a beautiful mindset. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I really hope you guys stick around. There's gonna be a lot more interesting content coming on this channel and I hope to see you guys in the next one. All right, stay blessed. Once again, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And please don't forget to click that notification button so you won't miss out on any future videos. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. All right, see you soon.